All right, so I thought I'd take a second and just do a quick video showing some of the work that I've been doing to uh, deal with horizontal alignment design in FreeCAD. Um, to this point, I've tried to use the Sketcher to lay out alignments with FreeCAD, and while the Sketcher is a perfect tool for that job, it just wasn't ever designed with large scale objects in mind you know typically when you use parametric CAD you're designing objects that are you know probably 30 feet in length or size or less uh, whereas with alignments you're laying something out that's you know 20, tens of thousands of feet or several miles long uh, so while the sketcher is perfectly suited for it right now it's just not up to the task and so for the time being I've opted to find another way to bring alignment data in though I think I've got some ideas for how I might still be able to use the sketcher to handle curve design at the moment there is no way to do curve design I, I have not created a way to do curve design in FreeCAD graphically so right now we're relying largely on uh, CSV files in order to get that done uh, but before I get into that, uh, those details, I just want to take a second, second and go back over just how highway alignment design is managed by transportation engineers. And I've talked about this in the past, but I want to cover it here just for the sake of uh, completeness. So when we talk about highway alignment design, I've got an example here of a, of a section of roadway I, I got from Google Maps. And in order to lay out an alignment, for example, perhaps we want to lay out an alignment that follows this existing existing section of road. Uh, what we need to do is we need to start by defining the uh, defining what are called the tangents. So here, we'll get this situated. And so the tangents are simply the straight sections of road. You see that I've got a road here with one, two, three curves in it and one, two, three, four tangents. So I can just take a line with my sketcher and I can lay out lines to represent the tangents and then go back and coincidentally constrain each of the ends of those tangents to one another. And then with a little bit of work, we can get those tangents to line up pretty good on the existing roadway. Just a little bit of effort. And that'll do for what I'm trying to accomplish. So now I've got my tangents laid out and where each tangent intersects with another we call a point we call that a point of intersection. So here I've got three points of intersections points of intersection uh, within the alignment and then of course one PI at the start and one PI at the end. Now of course the three internal PIs each represent an arc or a curve. Now once I've laid out my points of intersection if I simply constrain them with blocking constraints, and this is this is why I love the idea of using the Sketcher for a, a horizontal alignment design, because once I've laid out my uh, my tangents, I can lock them in place so they can't move, and then I can lay out my curves, oops, and tangentially constrain my curves to my tangents because they are, after all, tangents, and then go back and just adjust. <laughs> just adjust there we go just adjust the radius of my curve to, to until it looks right and then I can go in and I can continue doing this for the remainder of my two curves and in so doing by laying out my tangents first it makes it much easier to lay out the curves and to uh, to uh, iterate on the design and slowly get it to where it needs to be now as I said before Sketcher while it's ideally suited for this task is just not quite up to it as yet so I've opted instead to go for uh, a text-based approach and so what I what I did in this case was I will just delete that I created a, an alignment and in the Sketcher and then I used the Sketcher to come up with uh, the uh, geometric data that I need to be able to locate each of these elements. So what what happened? What's what's necessary now in order to describe these as data? I need to be able to locate each PI in a two-dimensional space, and I can do that in one of two ways. I can either locate it by x, y coordinate. In survey terms, we call these northings and eastings, uh, which would be a y and an x respectively, and they are simply geospatial coordinate positions projected on a plane so they correlate directly to an XY coordinate essentially or I can describe them relatively with respect to one another in other words I can say that this PI 
lies on a tangent whose bearing from north is 139 point 30, 139 degrees 20 minute, 1 minutes and 37 seconds and that length of that tangent is 928 feet and 928.965 feet and then of course my next tangent is described relative to that tangent each tangent has a bearing which is absolute from north but their length of course is relative to the previous PI so I can describe my PIs in one of two ways and then at each PI where there's a curve I can also describe a curve there and the only thing that I the only uh, characteristic of the curve that I need to describe is its radius or alternatively a degree of curvature which is simply a uh, a numerical description of how sharp the curve is and it correlates directly to radius or inversely rather um, so anyway once I've uh, acquired this data I can record it in a in a uh, spreadsheet CSV format like this and so here we have in these first four columns the geospatial position of the PI and so you see wherever I have a in I, I have I have not opted to use the northing and easting here I'm using strictly bearing and distance to locate my PIs but where I have both a bearing and a distance I am describing a point of intersection where two tangents intersect now you'll see that my first PI with a bearing of 139.3986 degrees and a distance of 930 feet correlates to this tangent here the 139 degrees 928 feet so this was so my first PI is actually this PI describing and and each PI is looking backwards describing the tangent that leads to it its bearing and its length I so in this file then I have not described this PI because it's assumed this PI is at the origin so I start with my second PI third fourth and final fifth PI and each PI as I say is looking back at the previous PI both in its in it in terms of its distance and then the bearing is measured absolutely with respect to north now then at my three internal PIs the 930 the 1850 and the 1680 distances I have either a radius for the curve or a degree of curve specified either one will do uh, because they convert directly from one to the other in addition to that, I have some uh, I have some extra columns that are used for other um, metadata and that sort of thing with respect to a horizontal alignment. They are the back, the back and forward, the parent ID, and the ID. Back and forward is a reference to stationing. Now, stationing is nothing more than a way of measuring along the length of an alignment. In in fact, it correlates directly to feet or meters. A station, however, at least in English units, correlates to 100 feet. So, for example, I have a tangent which is 930 feet long, this tangent here. We could say that is 9.3 stations long. Or, alternatively, when we write stationing, we use a notation like this. We write it as 9 plus 30.00. So, nine, station 9 plus 30.00 then would 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 fall on the on the alignment somewhere in here because stationing technically follows the curves it would not follow the back tangents so station 9 plus 30 would actually fall on the curve somewhere in here so stationing then is a simple way of measuring along an alignment and you see that I have back and forward stationing this back and forward refers to what are known as a station equation the station equations serve a few purposes. One of them is to identify where one road intersects another. Uh, and we'll get to that in just a second. The other thing I want to point out before we get to that is that I've given each alignment a name, and that's what the ID column is for. So you see that our main line alignment is called Sugar Grove Road. And then I have two side road alignments, Penrose Road on the west and Penrose Road on the east. And so we see then I have three alignments, three ID alignments. And each ID starts each alignments ID is on the first line of that alignment uh, so that indicates to the parser then that when it sees uh, a value in the ID, if ID field that a new alignment is being begun uh, by doing it that way then I am able to describe multiple alignments in a single file the parent ID column uh, is a column that is used when a secondary alignment when, when one alignment is a secondary to another so for example Penrose Road West Penrose Road East are secondary alignments to the mainline alignment of Sugar Grove Road. So you see that their ID Penrose Road West, Penrose Road East, 
and they both have the same parent ID, Sugar Grove Road. Now that brings us back to the back and forward stationing. Here we have uh, under Penrose Road West where we describe the parent ID as Sugar Grove Road we describe a back and a forward station five, uh, 50909 and 1000. The 1000 uh, just like the just like the 50,000 up here represents the starting station of that alignment. So this 50,000 is actually station 500 plus 00. zero. So in other words, along this alignment, if, if this is the start of my alignment, I am saying that this point here is station 500 plus 00. zero. So if we go 100 feet down the tangent, then we're at station 501 plus 00, zero 502 plus 00, zero, 503 plus 00, zero, and so on along the entire length of the alignment. So by the same token, my side road alignments will need stationing as well. And so what I'm saying in this case is that my Penrose Road West alignment begins at station 10 plus 00. zero. And that station 10 plus 00, zero on Penrose Road West correlates to station 509 plus 09 on Sugar Grove Road. So station 509 plus 09 falls right about here. And that's also station 10 on Penrose Road, we Ro Penrose Road West. So you can see then that is a station equation where the station on one alignment equals the same uh, a different station on another alignment. So once we've described these files like so, on uh, at the at the start of each alignment, I provide the uh, initial station value and the ID, and then on additional lines I describe the PIs, the bearing and the distance to each PI, and the radius if there's a curve at that PI. And then under my secondary alignments, I provide parent IDs with back and forward stationing. It's the back referring to the parent alignment and the forward referring to the child alignment. So once I've described my CSV file, I can import it into FreeCAD. So we'll, well, we'll leave that on for the moment, I guess. I can import that into FreeCAD by switching over to the Transportation Workbench and hitting Control-Shift-A. Now this allows me to import uh, a CSV file. And so I hit the ellipsis key to bring up my file dialog. And here I'm going to pick Sugar Grove Road Horizontal CSV and click Open. And you see when I do that, it opens the CSV file in a table and it lets me view the first few lines. You'll also notice that it picks up the headers. Now the names of the headers correlate to values that mean something to the horizontal alignment uh, code. And so what, what happens is in, in the background, I'm using the Python CSV sniffer in order to uh, parse the CSV file, which I'm finding out it's not the best tool to use, but it's working fairly well for my purposes here. Now in case the CSV sniffer uh, doesn't quite make it, it doesn't pick up the headers, you can choose, you can choose to tell it that you have headers specifically. Uh, if it gets the delimiter wrong, you can change the delimiter. If, for example, maybe it's a tab delimited file or a space delimited, you can you can change your delimiter to re represent that. Um, you'll also notice that, like I say, there's a correlation between the name of the header and the data label that's above it. Uh, in some cases, you might have columns that where the name of the header doesn't correlate to a data label, but maybe that column is one of those things. In that case you can double click on the column here and that brings up a drop down box and you can choose the corresponding data label that represents that column. You know, So perhaps that curve length is actually a degree and you can choose that there. In this case curve length doesn't mean anything so we'll leave that empty. If that data label is empty it will be ignored when the file is processed. So this is this has identified all of our uh, geometry correctly and so we're going to click OK and going to let it bring in the data. Now you see on the left hand side you see that it brought in three separate alignments just like I had three different IDs in my CSV file. If you take a look, we'll shut off the sketch, if you take a look at right I click on Sugar Grove Road and it lights up the main line, main line alignment, Penrose Road West, Penrose Road East. All right. Each of these is a horizontal alignment object and they have values or properties that can be controlled. If you take a look at the Sugar Grove Road horizontal alignment, you can see that it's got a series of dots. The the curve, the first curve here is tessellated uh, into a series of segments. And we look down here under the segment section, the method by which that curve is segmented is called tolerance in this case. And tolerance simply uh, ensures that the accuracy of the subdivision with respect to the actual true curve is 
at or less than the specified value. So here I have a tolerance of 1, and that's measured in feet in this case. And what that means then is these segments are no, no more than one foot away from where the actual curve is. Okay, so the, the, the vertices here would be on the actual curve, and the straight line segments will deviate from the curve by no more than a foot. So if I want to improve that tolerance, I drop it down to, say, a hundredth of foot, hit Enter, and you see that my curve just got a lot smoother. Reselect it, and you see I now have a whole bunch more points. I can also use different methods. Tolerance, by the way, is the default for surveying and highway design, uh, and it's the preferred method because it guarantees consistent accuracy regardless of the size or length of the curve. But alternatively, you can choose interval, which allows you to uh, specify a fixed interval for the segments. In this case, what, uh, what I've done is I've picked an interval of 100, which means my segments will be 100 feet long regardless of the size of the curve. Or I can, and there if I drop that down to 10, we see it gets sharper. Or I can use the segment method. And the segment method subdivides the curve into 10, in this case, into fixed segments, which is specified by the value. In this case, 10 fixed segments per curve, regardless of the size of the curve. And if I want to improve that, well, if I want to improve that, I can make that 100. Or if I want to make it worse, I can choose 1. And then I only, and then I, and then I have only one segment from the start of the curve to the end, and you can see that all my curves are like that. The reason why this matters is because, as you can see, the secondary alignments follow that curve. So if your accuracy is too low, the secondary alignments are going to chase it. And that might be something that I'll change in the future. But if I change my segments back to 100, you see that my alignment falls pretty clearly where it ought to. So that's the basic idea then of how horizontal alignments work in FreeCAD in so far as I have designed them. Uh, but I've, I, I've, uh, I've got a little bit more complex example that I want to show because it includes a few use cases that I have not been able to demonstrate or I'm not able to demonstrate with that. This is a 10 mile alignment, um, a 10 mile alignment of two lane roadway. and what you see on the screen here is the alignment laid out using simple draft arcs and tangents. In other words, I went through and I laid out every single straight tangent section and every single curve uh, just using the draft line and draft arc tools. And these side lines here are simply radius lines that I use to lay out the arcs. So, if, you know, here's a what is this? A 3,800 foot radius arc, and there's the arc itself that I laid out based on it. So, if I go in here to my simple geometry and hit that, that hides all those arcs. So this is the actual alignment uh, laid out pretty exactly to what it ought to be. And so now I've gone to, uh, and so I've actually gone to the trouble of specifying all of that. Give me just a second here. I think it's this one. There we go. So I've gone to the trouble of laying out all of those arcs in a CSV file and here we see that I have all of the same values as before this, uh, for headings. Notice here that I've, in this first column I have these numbers here. These are the station values along that alignment. My initial station is 1130 uh, plus 50 along the mainline alignment and then I have my first PI defi defined at 1143 plus 83.75 and so on and so on and so on. Uh, so these, so this is a representation then of just that mainline alignment uh, that you see there, um, and you'll notice that I have one additional column that doesn't show that it didn't show up in the Sugar Grove Road example, and that is the spiral column. The spiral column is for spiral curves. Uh, this is a feature I implemented here just very recently. Spiral curves are a special kind of curve. They're more complex. They're based on the clothoid or a, a, a Euler spiral, I believe is uh, another name for it. Um, and they're designed to help make transitions between the straight section of roadway and a curve smoother uh, to make it more comfortable, more comfortable and more aesthetically pleasing. We don't use them very much in highway design, at least not in the US anymore. Uh, but they are used fairly heavily in railway design because they are critical for ensuring a train doesn't tip over as it hits a section of super elevated track. So in this case you see that I do have a couple of spirals just to test the spiral. There are no spirals in this actual alignment but I've uh, retrofitted a couple over the original curves just to test out the spiral function. So what we'll do then is we'll go into uh, our 
horizontal alignment importing tool task rather and I will pick mainline demo which is this file and as before you see that it brings in the CSV and it pairs the headings listed in the file with actual data labels that are used in the in the uh, macro and then you see my spiral column was also picked up so once that's done we click OK and you can see then that it has brought in the alignment and it overlays very closely on top of what I laid out by hand with the arcs and segments. And now you see that there is some deviation here of course between what was brought in in the mainline horizontal alignment and then what I laid out and then if you look here you see that I have a tolerance set for one foot. So if I zoom in on that and switch over to draft and pick my line and we'll let's see if we can pick up nearest I won't worry about it then if I just kinda of try to draw a line you see that that line is about a foot in length so it shows that our error is in fact or our tolerances are in fact within a foot so if I want to improve that a little bit of course we'll switch that down to maybe a tenth of a foot and you see that all of a sudden I got more segments and it got a whole lot more accurate so that is uh, that really demonstrates how well this works um, I'm really pleased with how well this works to be honest I didn't I really didn't think it would it would work as well as it has um, and just real quick just to show that the spirals work you see that if you look up here this is the original curve and this is the spiral that I replaced it with and because a spiral uh, has a flatter approach on either side it will have a sharper curve in the middle and of course it will be projected above the original curve and so that is doing exactly what it ought to be doing and that's a right hand spiral and then down here somewhere in here let's see if I can find it mm, right here and right here of course is a left hand spiral so we show then that spirals actually work as well so that really demonstrates I think most of what I intended to show at the moment with horizontal alignments uh, the only other thing and this isn't really related to horizontal alignments but the other but the other thing that I've developed recently uh, is the ability to loft or to uh, sweep sketches along those alignments which is going of which of course is going to be the critical element to creating 3d models um, and in order to do that we'll go over that real quick in order to do that what we do I'll just delete this so I don't have oops conflicts the first thing I've done is I've created a template library and many thanks to Yorick for uh, the code that I used to build this uh, but what I've done is I've created a template library and the template library simply allows you to create a bunch of templates in sketches and store them and these templates rep represent certain sections of the roadway so here I have a template called default pavement and you can see down here in the preview that it's uh, just a roadway section uh, a section of a roadway and if I want to add it to my file I just double click on it and I think one of these days I'll I'll uh, make drop and drag drag and drop work as well and if we uh, if we go to the sketch mode and we look at the default pavement sketch we see that it is a default pavement that's one foot thick and 12 feet wide which is a standard standard dimensions for a pavement at least in the US so once I've created my default or I've I've applied or I've uh, excuse me added my default pavement template to my project I simply select my pavement and I select the alignment along which I want to sweep that pavement right click and select generate element loft and then just click OK to select the default values and it creates a sweep or a loft along that alignment using that sketch if I go back and I change the tolerance on my alignment to say a foot you can see then that it reruns the loft and it adjusts the sections of the loft accordingly to match the sections of that alignment so I can control the granularity I can control the accuracy of my model just by changing the tolerance along my alignment and that is a critical element to modeling uh, roadways in 3D is being able to control the degree of accuracy at various portions throughout the model so there you have it and that's about all I had to really show for horizontal alignment design in FreeCAD